Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Bobby, and today I want to talk about how to get rid of that over-the-top swing, that thing that's so maddening and that creates pull shots with the irons. And as the club gets bigger, pull slices, and over-the-top swing is a swing to the left. And if we're trying to get rid of it, then what we need to do is take it to the opposite extreme. If a pull cut is what we don't want, then what we need to do is learn how to hit a push draw. And that's a shot that's a great deal more powerful. And anybody who has that pull slice would be glad to hit it even once. The push draw would be uh, very welcome to most golfers. And so th it's important to understand right from the beginning that so often the slice and the over-the-top swing are associated together that one might begin to think that the slice was caused by the over-the-top swing, and that's not the case. It's kind of like if you, you know, happen upon a car crash on the highway, and you get there and you notice there are police cars everywhere. And then it seems like you, you go to another car crash sometime later and there's more cops there. And it's like every time there's a car crash, you see all these police officers. It'd be natural to think, well, it must be these cops that are causing these car crashes because they're always there. They're always at the scene of the crime. When in reality, we know that the police officers are just there to help things along after the fact. The same thing with an over-the-top swing. That's not the cause. It's what the golfer tries to employ to help this slice along because as they stand before the ball, they sense they're going to lose it to the right. And so they're swinging over the top to the left to give it room to work. That's all there is to it. And so what we need to do is get rid of, of the open face and then the over the top swing will disappear like magic. Now, what do we wanna do? Well, we wanna take it to the opposite extreme. And I want you to imagine for just a moment that this club is a baseball bat. Not the entire instrument, just the club face from here to here. I'm holding onto the handle of the bat, that's the barrel of the bat. And anybody who knows anything about baseball knows that if you wanna hit one down the third base line, you might be lined up toward the pitcher, but you're gonna get the bat around. That's how you're gonna hit it down the third base line. Well, the golfer who's trying to get rid of that open face better learn to get that bat around. They need to get the bat around prior to impact. Now, let me say from the outset, you've got to have something like a workable grip. And that means if both hands are on the very top of the club and both thumbs are going down the center, you're just going to have to go on hitting poor shots until you get that grip worked out. Both hands should be a little bit on the right side so that the V's created by your thumb and, and base of your hand are both pointed somewhere between your right ear and right shoulder, all right? And then you can work, you've got room to, to turn the ball over. But what are we trying to do? We're trying to get the bat around. Now, as I swing and I hit this ball, I'm gonna get the bat around. And remember, in the beginning, I have an over-the-top swing, and so when I get the bat around, not only am I gonna get the ball to curve to the left, but I'm probably gonna pull it to the left. Whoa, that thing went left of the world. It started at 11 o'clock, and it's hooking toward 10 o'clock. But isn't that great? That's a well-made beginning because I have, for the first time, got a ball to actually curve left. That's fine, I've just got to fix my path. Let's do it again. Remember, I'm still maligned with this habit of pulling left, so I might not have success yet, but I, can, I do know I can get the bat around, though. I just proved it to myself. Holy moly, another hook. All right, now, once I can get that ball curving left, regardless of the starting point, it doesn't matter that it's a starting at 11. We're about to fix that. I want to keep that aspect where I get the bat around, but I want to direct the club itself more out to right center field. Now, what am I asking myself to do here? I'm asking myself to swing in the direction of my former fear. I've been fearing that that way, but I've just shown myself that I can get it to curve left as long as I get my forearms around, as long as I get the bat, uh, bat around, but I'm gonna direct the effort itself out to right center field. And if I can do that, I'm really looking out there. Oh my goodness, that ball just started at 1230 and it's coming back to 12. I hit that thing a ton, a nice push draw. Why? Because I took it in stages. I first learned to get the bat around, even if that's going to cause them hook, 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 hook. Then I'm going to get the path worked out so that I can actually swing out to right center field, yet get that face shut, and then all my problems are solved. Now, I recommend you tee them up quite generously in the beginning. And then the second round, put them on tees, but just a little bit lower. And then the third round, go ahead and put them right on the grass. And you'll be making incremental progress, and soon you'll be able to hit that high draw, and it'll add two or three clubs to the, the, to the strength. Instead of hitting a, you know, a seven iron into a hole, you'll probably be hitting a pitching wedge because that's how much more powerful that push draw is than that from that over the top pull slice. Ladies and gentlemen, I wanna thank you for tuning in. Go through that sequence, it'll help immensely. See you next week.